through uh, actually some of our PPTs while taking class I have uh, created I, I, I created in the Google Drive. So this is also uh, very easy. You can access with a simple link. OK. But where is my system configuration PPT? Hardware, operating system, operating system, services. So yeah, this is the PPT. So this is the most general question is what is your system configuration? What is your IP address? One side it is a importance because of the question uh, interview question. So another side guys, for example, you want to install a, an application. You want to install an application. So before going to install an, an application, you must know what is your system configuration. For example, I, will, I want to install a Python. Python, I want to install a Python. Python only it will install in a uh, uh, Python again. So you are a download a Python. In a Python, there is 32 bit and 64 bit. So you download a 64 bit Python application means you have to install on a 64 bit PC. And you download a latest uh, Python, uh, so 3.10 or 3.12 or 3.11. You downloaded it. It may not work in a Windows 7 or Windows 8. You may require Windows 10. OK, so you must know the CPU compatibility, architecture compatibility, RAM availability, hard disk storage space, OK, and the operating system compatibility is also important. OK, so uh, uh, you, uh, you know uh, my brother, my uh, uh, cousin brother is there. So you want to install a SOLIDWORKS. He's a, he's a mechanical guy. You want to install a SOLIDWORKS. She is unable. He is unable to install in his uh, PC. So he, he didn't understand why it is very slow. Then uh, we check it is it's a minimum requirement is 8 GB RAM. So it is very slow. So we upgrade his RAM. We upgrade his uh, 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 RAM. OK, so he is already having a 4 GB RAM. So we add 8 GB to it. Then it is become 12 GB. Now it is uh, working. OK, not now. So it has happened uh, almost six years okay, back only. So that time DDR3 is there now. So that time. it mean meaning is why we should know the system configuration. So why why is important before what? So uh, to inst to install any application, to run uh, any virtual machines, to to install any applications, to run any virtual machines, virtual machine kind of stuff you want to run, or uh, to install an operating system in a in a fresh PC. That is also some part of uh, system requirement is there, right? We, we cannot blindly install. Okay, so to run some programs. To run some program or to play games, you know, to play gaming also, we required a minimum system configuration. Uh, what is your CPU? Uh, how much RAM is required? How much uh, storage space is required? What kind of operating system it will support? Okay, what kind of operating system it support? Uh, and uh, 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 graphic memory. If you have a graphic card, then the how much graphic memory, a graphic card you are using, graphic memory is available. So that is why we required a system configuration. So whenever you are checking about your system configuration, you have to list uh, what is your CPU. Is a CPU is AMD processor, Intel processor. So then what is the model? Is it a i3, i5, i7 processor, a Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5 a kind of processor? What is the speed of processor? What is the speed of processor? 2.6 GHz, 2.9 GHz, 3 GHz, 4 GHz processor. How many cores in it? It's a two core processor, four core processor, eight core processor. What is this catchy? What is the catchy um, in the processor? These are uh, important in some 
important. Okay. And what is your RAM? How much RAM is there? How much availability of RAM is there? How much total RAM you have? How much availability of RAM? What type of RAM you are using? What is the speed of that RAM? Okay. Next, hard disk or SSD. Earlier days, still now, we are using hard disk, HDD. Now, uh, if you are buying a new laptop, so the laptops are coming with a SSDs. Instead of hard disk, we are getting SSDs. But whether it is hard disk or a SSD, use it to store data and your operating system. You have a laptop or a desktop. First of all, you have to store operating system in it where we store either a SSD or a hard disk, store the operating system. Then we store the data. So you want to install an application. So some applications will take only 10 MB. Some may require 1 GB. Okay. So some may require 1 GB also. Some may require a, a 5 GB, 8 GB. You know, usually we download a games and install a games. The games are like a um, 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 COD, Call of Duty kind of games. Okay. In, 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 the, in, the, that, in that range of games, it will take uh, 10 GB, 12 GB, 8 GB uh, yes, uh, space, right? Yes. So, yes, very good. You must know what is the uh, availability. So, total GB is required and availability. You know, last time I installed a Oracle application. Okay. So, I cannot, ins uh, I, don't, I, I didn't install in C drive because very less space, I put it in a Z drive. I changed my drive letter. So I put a, my Oracle 21C in this drive. You know how much it is occupied? It's around, um, so you'll see that one. So this is app folder contains a Oracle application. So it is going on. Lot of folders, files are there now. So that will take time. 9 GB simple Oracle application 21C Oracle application that to express edition only. I, I didn't install any uh, enterprise application also. Just a express a simple application I installed. It taken a lot of space, almost like a 9 GB. Okay, I have uh, uh, that kind of uh, places here. Normal data is normal data, but this is a installed application. Like this, your applications are generally located under Windows system, Windows, C drive, program files, x86 means 32 bit application, program files means 64 bit application. See, these are uh, applications already installed. See, this is a Python. So, how much space it is occupied? It is okay. See this. It's around 130, 150. It is going up. Even though it is take very less. Not even a 1 GB, it is around a 300 MB space it is occupied. But some applications will take more space, right? So how much disk space availability? Now can you see? So 12 GB disk space availability out of two, uh, 18 GB of total C drive only 12 GB is available. So I want to install some application and I, uh, but it will take uh, some 8 GB or 10 GB. So I cannot install into C drive. So compulsory know how to check it. Knowing is better. So knowing make you less blind, less blind. Okay. So some people will do blindly that way. Next one is operating system. You know why we should know our operating system also. Yeah, we have Windows 10, sir. Uh, I, that is that's only. But in operating system, not only Windows 10, Windows 8, there is a operating system. Editions also there. Home edition, enterprise edition, pro edition kind of stuff is there. So each edition having some properties. 
some applications can be installed only in that particular editions. For example, you know, when I try for a installing Docker application, it is used in a DevOps, Docker containerization kind of stuff. So that one that is uh, an up, one kind of application. It is there's two ways of application is there. It won't install in home anyway because there is a, a Hyper-V platform is there earlier. It is not installing into the home edition, so I can't install into the Windows 10 home edition. So I need a pro or an enterprise only so then I can able to um, install. OK, so not only that, so for example, Windows 10 home edition don't have a bit locker technology. So uh, yeah, the guy is like, uh, no, you have a drive, you have a hard disk drive is there, C drive, D drive is there. Do this bit locker. Do bit locker on the D drive. So in a home edition, we don't have any bit locker kind of stuff. OK, so knowing about uh, edition and knowing about the basic features. Basic feature, I'm not advanced features and all. Something basic features of your edition is also very important. That features will learn later, but these are the things. I'm taking a lot long time, but still uh, trying to make you understand. If you understand, good. So how to check these things? There is a different ways to get it. One is task manager. Another is MS Info 32, DX Diag. Another one is you can go to your uh, Windows Start button settings in the settings system and go to about. There you will find some information. Also, you can do the command things right, uh, like a system info also. The first one is so go to task manager. Guys, uh, I'm talking in the very zero level. Some may get a bore also. OK, because some people already know the computer, so some people are already doing. I, I thought not everyone is uh, from the IT background, mainly. Non technical background people also there in our classroom. I don't know exactly your qualifications and all. So I'm going in a level zero. Even you can see it is a minus level also. Guys, this is a start button. OK, in Windows, this is called a start button so then you can it will show us a start menu okay this is search this is the called a search you can put a task manager from here you can search an application or a, a tool or a, a document also from here in the search i'm not searching from it this is the Cortana, so you can open this task manager, open Cortana also, you may try in a voice commands, like a voice assistance. This task view, kind of stuff. These are the taskbar icons, and uh, these are a notification area, this part. The exactly say in this bottom, you can see this is the bar. This bar, we call it as a task bar. OK, this is called a task bar. So left to the task bar is like a start menu search and uh, task bar I icons are there. In right side, this is a notification area or quick menu area type. OK. So this is called a task bar. Better is always right click on the task bar. You can see task manager. You can see task manager. So this is the easiest way to open the task manager okay, using simple mouse click. So you can see task manager. There is a process. So sometimes it will show us like this. Click on more details. Processes, performance, app history, startups, users, details services so one of the important tool in the our windows system is task manager okay see here is a process 
it will show the running process, how much CP is consuming, how much memory is consuming and all. So performance, startups, okay, details and services. These tabs are very, very important. Of course, what we need only here, performance on. Uh, I will show you all these things, but one side I saw, I told about how to open a task manager. Right click on the taskbar. Next you can go to run command. So like like this, we can put a task MGR. You can put a task MGR. Click OK, then it will open task manager. See like this. Next uh, in a command prompt also you can put a task manager in search. You can put a task manager. In search button you can put a task. Manager. Of course you put a alt control delete. If you put a alt control delete, I can't show you that one because if I put alt control delete, we will disconnect. You go go to alt control delete. There is a sign out option will be there now. So there, there also you can see task manager. So whatever it is, what are the way you want to open? So open the task manager CPU. See in this one you can see here it is. What is your Intel processor? I5 processor. My processor is I5 3230M. This is a third generation I5 processor. Third generation I5 processor. 2.6 gigahertz clock speed. This processor having a two cores, four logical processor means four threads. Two core, four thread processor. Okay. And of course, virtualization is a technology is enabled. So then I can run virtual machines in this PC. And uh, L1, L2, L3 cache memories. Uh, tell me hello sir what yeah, is tell logical tell. process very good very good question normally in um, earlier days we have a pentium 1 pentium 2 pentium 3 pentium 4 process it's a single processor okay but in a server purpose, single processor power is not enough. So those days they what the people are using the motherboard having a multi processor kind of stuff means you can put a more than one processor in a, on a single motherboard like a two processor on a single motherboard three two, four processor on a single motherboard facility is there. So multiple processors. It's not multi core, multiple processors. So, and a next level of processing for a, a regular desktop purposes also, it is uh, we have only single core processor. So, what the people are done, they cannot able to increase the speed or as number of transistors in the processor because if they increase in a single processor, processor become very big. It's very difficult to handle. People want a small size, not a big size. Already from big size of computer to small size of computer we came. But if they put more transistors, more thing in this one to increase the power, so it is not good. So what they have done, they use a technique and they build, uh, they merge two processors side by side like this with a single catchy power. They build a dual processor, dual core processor. Still, it is available. Dual core processor, like a Pentium Gold processors are there. So check it. So go, these two processors are available. Okay, these two processors are available. two processors in the as a single processor. And so this technique also not uh, um, part, not not as uh, good result, uh, but it is good, but not as. 
So what the technique is followed instead of adding two processors. So what they done, they break single processor into two parts. It means it's a single CPU, one single CPU. It is it divided into two parts like a core zero. Core one like a two core. Like a two core, it's a single processor divided into two parts. And each core having a separate catch. So multitasking is become more easy now. Earlier days, single processor means there's a lot of waiting is there. Like you do multitasking. So based on the priority calculation, the task is scheduling like a process one go process like it's they maintain a queue. First one is completed, then second one. Sometimes in middle, there is a one important priority, uh, higher priority processor is there. Again, processor has to handle. Means earlier days, one by one handling. Okay, based on uh, the processor priority and queue system. Now, one processor, one process will process now here in one core, another parallelly processing. So what happened? It's the same processor, but same processor, one side, one processor, one process, another another part, another process. It will it can able to handle two process at a time. Two process at a time. So this is the core technology. We have a mobile for now. We are not uh, mining about much uh, in a mobile. Earlier days, I means few days back, a few years, two, three years. Four years, five years back. So we have a processor like an octa core processor. Octa core processor, deca core processor. Next one is what is this? Logical processor. Okay, now. See this. Core processor further divided to Appa. My voice is multiplying. Yes, sir. There's yes, an echo. Yeah, so because two connections in the Okay. So each processor means each core further divided into divided into two parts for example so it is a two core four logical processors two core four logical processor so because of this one the performance of pc will increases performance of pc increases so if you take uh, uh, in general like um, like this what is four core processor single processor divided into four parts then what is a uh, um, i said uh, four core processor right if it is divided again into two parts means it is eight logical processors four core processor eight logical processors sometimes it is only four core for example last time i purchased one i3 processor that is four core processor that's it it does not have any threads if it is having a thread like a, a kind of stuff then it is become like a eight core processor type okay so this is a core logic octa core processor deca core mobile phone circuit So number of core increases, of course, performance increases. Guys, it is not only a number of cores. Also very important is a cache memory in the CPU. So uh, what it is? L1, L2, L3, 
Tolong mutus. Uh, L1, L2. You are asking this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I will tell. I will. Tell. What okay. is the difference between four core processor and eight core processor, sir? Um, four core processor having a four logical process. Eight core processor having a eight logic. Single processor only divided into eight parts. So more handling, more thread handling is increases. Like your mobile phone is a eight core processors. Our mobile phones are basically eight core processor, uh, DECA core processor. I mean, 10 core processors are almost like a gone in the market. OK, again, four cores, eight cores only we are uh, having. So because in mobile phone, multiple things we are handling, right? 4G signal, Wi-Fi signal, uh, lot of processes there. Even you don't install more apps. You are not running more apps, but more things are uh, must be handled by your mobile phone. Okay. Yes, sir. See, uh, okay, good. Uh, I will tell uh, I, I L1, L2, L3 kind of stuff also, but see here it is. My processor is i5 processor and this is the third generation processor. And this is the clock speed of the processor. So this is the speed of processor, of course. What are these? Here it is. It's a two core processor. Logical processors are four. Of course, uh, virtualization is enabled, so uh, we'll we'll partake it. And important is L3 cache. OK, L3 cache because L1, L2 is always uh, almost same and it is very small, but L3 cache. What is this cache memory? So guys, this is a CPU. OK, this is CPU and uh, this is RAM. OK. You know, a lot of people we are giving input to the CPU. We don't give input to the CPU. We'll give input to the IO controllers like uh, from your keyboard. Your mouse, your monitor, your uh, anything uh, like uh, your pen drives. OK, so whatsoever it is we are giving input to the input output will be controlled by IO controller chips only. So whether you are giving input or you are uh, taking output so through IO controller, IO controller give data to the RAM. RAM load the information from your hard disk or from your keyboard, from your mouse. OK, so it load the data. Through IO, uh, IO, IO controller to your RAM, your RAM to CPU. But RAM speed is different. CPU speed is different. So what they will do it on CPU on CPU only. They put a one small cache memory. It means RAM. Give data to the cache memory cache memory to the CPU. Cache to CPU means simple. It's a CPU. Main CPU is like this CPU contains. Central processing unit is contains a ALU, arithmetic and logical unit. So this is cache. What is a cache kind of stuff? It take the data from your RAM and give it to, to the CPU. CPU process the data uh, and give it to cache and cache load into RAM. So that will happen. So it will matches the speed between CPU speed and RAM speed, and also it does not make the CPU ideal. Faster loading will happen. And in this cache, there is a cache levels are there. L1 cache, L2 cache, L3 cache. L1 cache, L2 cache, L3 cache. So L1 is near to the CPU, then L2, then L3. It is a layers only. It is a layer. First layer is L1. On L1, L2. On L2, L3. So L3 is a mostly it is outer than outer to CPU. Okay, that's why we have to check first uh, L3 cache memory. When you are purchasing a laptop or a desktop 
okay or uh, you are checking uh, any server uh, processor kind of stuff the processor cache memory two is a 2 mb 4 mb 10 mb 12 mb kind of uh, cache memory is also there okay so bigger the cache so more easily it will load the data and give it to your cpu cpu is extremely fast for example your cpu is a 4 gigahertz cpu is a 4 gigahertz processor and you, you you don't have much cache memory or maybe it is not even a 1 mb cache for example less than 1 mb cache memory or no cache memory it is very slow system it is very slow system 4 gb 4 gigahertz speed 1 mb cache slow system so you can you can see 2.6 gigahertz processor for example 6 mb cache 6 mb cache it is fast system okay so we cannot always measure based on the cpu clock speed and cache memory but so combination so we can understand it is which is a better of course this speed is also important and also l cache memory is also very important okay so l1 l2 l3 caches are cache labels so every processor having l1 l2 guarantee l1 l2 guarantee l3 is some processor may not having l3 also possible okay and also l3 is always a bigger than l1 l2 okay so l1 is near to cpu then uh, l2 and then l3 it is like a layers you load the information from ram and give it to your cpu and cpu process it and give it your cache and cache will give that in instructions data uh, what the output to the ram like this and ram give it to io controller io controller give this information to your devices okay so these things we can able to get from here i taken a big class okay so guys here it is your i5 processor 3230m 2.6 gigahertz processor two core processor four logical and catch is 3mb next one is memory this memory is also your ram ram memory we are seeing ram memory last time one guy given a uh, um, how to check a rom space a rom don't have any specific memory kind of stuff because it's a fixed one ram is not fixed one ram is we can change the ram capacity for example when i when we purchase this laptop it is 4 gb ram then i add a 8 gb to it then it is become 12 gb if in case if i remove that 4 gb then it is only 8 gb i i for example i add a uh, uh i remove that 4 gb and add 8 gb then totally to become 12 gb okay that's the point guys so look at here okay see it is my ram is how much it is 12 gb and which model it is ddr3 it's a old ram so it is a ddr3 model and speed of the ram is 1600 megahertz and slots used uh, two of two two of two two of two means in my laptop i have a uh, two ram slots are there means i can insert two rams okay so two slots are there so i can insert two rams so already i inserted two rams in one slot 4 gb ram is already there then another slot i put a 8 gb ram so totally become 12 gb ram so that's it is two of two i used two slots if i use only one slot it's one of two okay it's a sodium package it's a every ram has a different packaging technique in your laptop you use sodium packages okay again important is 
size of the total size of the ram and the ram model is very important and speed of the ram is very important speed of the ram is very important this is also can this is the variable guys availability of ram now is 4.8 out of 12 gb only i have a 4.8 if I close some applications, if I close some applications, it become 5 or 5.5 .5 or 6 GB. If I open some application, it become again 4 GB or 3 GB, 2 GB, depends upon how my utilizing. So it is in use 7 GB, available 4.8 GB. Okay. In use, 7 GB, 7 plus 5, fall right, 7 plus 5. This is around 5, right? 7 plus 5 is 12. Of course, because some unpooled, pooled, pooled kind of stuff is there. So here it is. This is a 7 GB is in, in use. This is 4.8 means around 5. It is a 12 GB. Available memory is also very important. Lesser the available memory, slower the system. And compared to uh, uh, your memory, total memory, it is the available memory is uh, must be um, more than 40 percent uh, available is better. OK, for example, you have a 4 GB RAM. You have 1 GB available. Oh, good. You have a 8 GB RAM. 1 GB available. Not good. OK, this is good. This is not good. Depends upon your total memory and availability. Large difference is there. No? That is what I am trying to say. So I have a 12 GB. So 12 GB means basic system required 2 GB RAM and application I'm using maximum 1 to 2 GB RAM. So 4 GB maximum 4 to 5 GB should be consumed, but it is consuming 7 GB means not good. Guys understand how to check the memory and CPU. And what are the things we have to check? Understand these two things, CPU and memory, how to check it. Yes, sir. Very. Yes, sir. So you can check the hard disk also here. So we'll go to Snape. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. sir. Tell me, tell you, me. Sir, if you in, increase your RAM to 64 GB, so can, can it support to your system or depend upon the processor, how much I can increase my RAM? Good question. Actually, I understand. Look at here. Uh, you, you want to increase the RAM, so then it will work much better, right? So here are two important things. One, if you want to increase your RAM capacity, I think this is a RAM. This is CPU. So. My uh, earlier RAM is 4 GB plus I added a 8 GB to it. It become 12 GB. It is better performance. In case I want to increase more. For example, OK, I want to increase more. So two factors I said one is number of slots. Number of RAM slots, sorry, RAM slots number of RAM slots on motherboard on motherboard. So your laptop, if you flip the laptop backside, you open the cover, you can see there is a only two slots are there for example. For example, you have a only two slots are there. It means only you can put two RAMs. That is the first condition. Second motherboard support. 
maximum RAM capacity supported by motherboard and type. RAM type is also important here. Supported by motherboard and processor, RAM type is also there. Like my motherboard support DDR3. Of course, my processor is also support DDR3. Okay. Uh, or uh, for example, you purchase a new laptop, you should do DDR4. Or DDR5 is also available now. Okay, very less available because 12th generation only uh, one kind of model only supporting DDR5. So all are supporting DDR4. Okay, so point is which type? DDR3, DDR4, DDR5 model it is. Is supported by motherboard? Is it supported by CPU or not? The size of the RAM also depends upon your CPU. My CPU support, for example, 16 GB RAM. Maximum 16 GB RAM. My CPU support maximum 16 GB. So I cannot put more than 16 GB. I recently purchased one laptop that is, uh, so not a laptop, desktop processor. It support uh, um, 64 GB. 64 GB. Of course, I already use 16 GB uh, RAM to it. Okay, so still I can able to put uh, remaining. Okay, so if, if possible, like if I put 32 GB, also no problem. Second RAM is 32 GB, also no problem. So then it is become 48 GB. Or I remove this 16 GB, put a 32, 32, also no problem. Because I have only two slots are there. Okay. So one is okay. depends upon your CPU, another is depends upon your motherboard. And in the in that one, you have to check type of RAMs, RAM speed support, type of RAM, RAM speed support, motherboard slot support, CPU support also. Actually, uh, I will tell that one only so you can see here it is, guys. When you, for example, my processor. My processor is i5 3230M processor. Right? Just go through your processor and your model. You can see arc.intel.com. Arc.intel.com. Go through this link. Okay. Or you can go to intel.com. Sorry. Intel.in it is. It is intel.in. And this is uh, arc.intel.com. Okay, so this is my processor model. Two core processor, four threads. Confirm base frequency 3.6 gigahertz press. My cache bit. Like before you purchase a laptop or a desktop. Yeah, my, my laptop support 32 GB. One second, guys. Okay, so it is a uh, support up to 32 GB and this model of RAM is support DDR3 L means it's a low voltage RAM and uh, you can use 1600 megahertz speed RAM or a 1333 megahertz speed of RAM also. Okay, your CPU and RAM supporting speed. Your CPU supported RAM size, CPU yeah. supported RAM speed, RAM model. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Sir, sir if we use like different megahertz speed of RAM, then what will happen to our system? Uh, it's it become incompatible. For example, my this CPU support only 1600 megahertz, for example. So I use something 2100. Okay. It becomes incompatible. 
cash memory is uh, one sir why cash memory usually give an example to be used for passing the data from cpu to ram yeah uh, one storage? example i will tell see okay. this one. i'm not a, i am not a big fan of uh, cricket and uh, i'm not playing any cricket kind of stuff but look at here in a example is cricket is best example that we have a two batsmen and there is a bowler right so bowler balls batsman hit the ball right the ball went to some place like this there is a guy got the ball it is long distance from the uh, this pitch so what this guy will do these people are uh, running so what this boy guy will do try to hit the ball to the wicket right to want to take a uh, um, run wicket so then uh, he, he will try to throw the ball towards wicket okay but it not matches no accuracy what this someone which is near to the wicket will catch the ball first and try to hit it make it more accurate you know some people were confidently throw the ball at a wicket it become four also okay these guys are uh, the the batsman want to take only single run but this uh, this guy give four runs okay so that is uh, sometimes it will happens so what they will do it so to stop the uh, score at least not to, to take the wicket and as to not to increase the unnecessary kind of stuff so then he will catch the ball and hit it right so is a guy is work like a catchy important is more important is the cpu and ram speed is different so ram is uh, the, uh, we are using uh, dram type means uh, dynamic rams we are using sir one more question so the ram speed is slower uh, and it is a loading and forwarding kind of stuff it delays so cache don't delay the cache will match the speed between your cpu and your ram the cache working speed is as much as speed of your cpu only it can easily load and give it to your cpu faster so cpu want to store some data for while it is processing also store in cache only once processing completed then it will give it to the ram so for cpu utilization and faster loading yeah tell me uh, sir cache memory is used for passing the data or it store any data it don't store um, um, very simple ram or cache very yes. simple sir, it is mean, like uh, a, uh, sir it mean it uh, it is a mediator between cpu or ram yeah it's like a mediator but exactly say guys storing into the hard disk is different like i store a data in the hard disk so i have a documents i have a data in the hard disk this is permanent data right so until unless i deleted it permanent data until unless i changed it or i deleted it but in a ram or a cache data is not permanent for example think like this is the bucket this is one some tub or a one big uh, um, uh, wall uh, well it is for example it is a well okay i have a well uh, and this is a uh, some kind of uh, turbine okay tub kind of stuff big tub so uh, okay so uh, you are fetching water means you are taking water from here to the bucket and you are pouring the water to this tub so is your bucket is storing any water no yeah it's storing water but it passing it again it fetching and giving fetching and giving so it's like a it is storing for a short like time a period 
yeah it is store and uh, a forward kind of stuff on it don't store permanently if it is storing permanently what happen so your ram is stored permanently means no further process okay it give and delete do give and delete delete give and delete okay so this is what happens with your ram and cache memory but cache is very near to your cpu so it is faster it can able to give data to the cpu and in a while processing if cpu want to store some or uh, data in the cache memory also it can able to store okay uh, for temporary but once it is processing completed it want to generate an output the output is sent to the ram ram again sent to the your io controllers okay so like this this is your cache memory yeah okay uh, we are in a hard disk right so this is our hard disk guys this is just a model but capacity is here this is 500 gb ram capacity 500 gb hard disk capacity i have two hard disk actually in my laptop i have two hard disk so this is a second hard disk that is 1 terabyte my primary hard disk is uh, 500 gb in this hard disk three partitions mainly c drive f drive d drive three hard disk three partitions are there in this one g drive e drive h drive okay this is not only this information cpu information memory hard disk information okay so also you can get that your network information where is so this is your network adapter my network connectivity and my ip address and how network is going on how much speed data is transmitting per second okay per second how much data is transmitting and this is my graphic card so this is the graphic card model and total graphic card is 2 gb graphic card okay so this information we can able to get it once again guys so again i will uh, go through once your task manager so go to task manager performance see the cpu this is your cpu model so write down the cpu model go through your uh, google.com right put your cpu model there and then go to this arc.intel.com or intel.in so then you can get this information about your cpu also like about your cpu number of cores number of threads you can click on this question mark so you will get the, what is the meaning of this threads base process base frequency cache memory maximum ram support type of ram it is support okay and other informations you can get it also nowadays compulsory check is it a 64 bit processor instruction set 64 bit processor and virtualization technology yes or no see intel virtualization technology yes 64 and virtualization technology must be yes nowadays you are purchasing these things are a compulsory any laptop or a desktop or a single processor you are purchasing compulsory check their details next so this is your cpu model this is your clock speed number of cores number of logical processor and the cache memory is also important virtualization technology enabled or not next what is your ram gb ram This one is the best USB DVD. Ah, voice is mixing. Actually, sir, I have a question. Uh, tell me, sir, I have a 4 GB RAM laptop and it, it's become too slow, sir. I have to increase RAM or SSD, sir. 
ram is better fast ram you are uh, having a hard disk or a ssd sir hard disk i have normal uh, normal hard disk you are uh, having don't change yes. it to ssd that is a false information because some business <laughs> okay Okay, uh, look at here. Uh, yes, this the also I want to tell one thing, guys. Um, lot of people are uh, uh, think uh, not understanding the difference between SSD and SSD. Now, what is that? I will show you this. You know, you have a normal uh, laptop hard disk. The connection is SATA type of connection. So then you will get a. If you want to replace your hard disk with the SSD that is also SATA hard SSD. So SATA SSD and SATA hard days almost all same speed only. Only thing is SSD is a costlier. Only thing is it is cost. than normal. Laptop hard disk, but data transmission speed is not much different, but you are purchasing a new laptop. Or you are having a desktop. If you can be able to use this type of SSD, this is NVMV M.2 SSD. See, it is NVMV M.2 SSD. This SSD data transmission is very high speed. And the data transmission of SSD. Is a mainly for loading to faster boot up. For example, operating system boot up, applications running, playing games. Normal hard disk is a cheaper. Normal laptop hard disk is cheaper. We can store a lot of data in it. SSDs we cannot store the lot of data. It is only for installing operating system and applications. If you have a game kind of stuff, you want a big application kind of stuff, you want to run it very fastly, then you can use SSDs. But do not replace your working hard disk with a SSD for a increasing speed. If possible, try to increase your RAM capacity. Second one is already I told in the task manager, there is a few things are very important. One of the thing is these startups. Check your startups, guys. Lot of startups are there. Better to uninstall some applications if you are not using. For example, can you see this is the bit torrent is showing here. It's not required nowadays. Torrents are not working. Still, I am uh, having that application. Still, I am having that application. Better I should uninstall it because it's not required nowadays. OK, some applications, for example, CC cleaner. I'm using this CC cleaner, but it is not required at the time of start my PC. When I required, I will use it. Otherwise, I don't use it. OK, and you know, I install a Oracle application, right? I disable that services also. So this is first of all, go to startup. Check the applications are listed on the startup. You can disable those application if you don't require. OK, and uh, restart your computer. It may give you a little bit better performance. Check the C RAM memory and check the available memory also. Make sure it is going to be increased than earlier. So once you are disabled the startup, uninstall any unnecessary applications. OK, um, that is always better. And of course, in the services also, some applications you can uh, disable the services or can change it to manual also. Better option. That is, we'll see later, okay? But these are uh, very important again. Any unnecessary applications and startups, remove it. Second. I'm a.
Okay. Um, yeah. So this is a uh, simple guy. So uh, we'll uh, complete this one first. Okay. So check your uh, available memory and total memory. And if any chance, check your uh, processor model. And if you have any chance, increase the your RAM capacity. So don't unnecessarily throw your uh, working hard disk and change it to again SSD. That is also SATA connectivity. It is unnecessary money waste. OK, so that's uh, uh, that's the point. Uh, one point important. Where am I? Yeah, again, go to task manager. So system configuration CPU. I5 processor 3230M model 2.6 gigahertz processor 3MB catchy 2 core 4 logical processor virtualization is enabled. Your memory 12 GB RAM 12 GB total 12 GB RAM DDR3 model 1600 MHz speed. Sir, uh, you can ask me, sir, how much data we can able to remember uh, if there are someone is asking question in the interview. Very important. I3 processor, I5 processor. Model. This one, that's it enough. OK, RAM capacity. 12 GB RAM DDR3. That is enough. But I'm giving more information, but how much you are importantly remember that is important. So you are having I5 processor. I have I5 processor 3230M. That's it. Not enough. Uh, not, uh, it's, sorry, so not. Uh, it's it is enough. Not required. Uh, um, compulsory. If you are not telling that one, marks are reduced. That is not there. But better to see all the information what I told. Okay. But when you are speaking, so important is it's a 12 GB uh, total memory DDR3 model. Your hard disk is 500 GB hard disk. 466 means 500 GB. That's it. You have a connectivity that is also just verify and you have a graphic card. What is your graphic card size? Also just verify. This is the data you are getting from. You are getting from task manager. Like this. Okay. Your, uh, your uh, task manager RAM capacity, hard disk capacity, network capacity, your graphic card. Okay. Next one is guys MS Info 32. Uh, because it's at 12 o'clock, uh, I'm speaking uh, uh, randomly. So just I will show you this is configuration. And uh, um, we'll take a break, then we'll go to the next. OK, just give me a five minutes. So we'll give no, 10 minutes. OK, uh, I will give you a break. MS Info 32. If you don't know how to open this run, OK, no problem. You can use like this MS Info 32, or you can just go to this search, click on search. Type MS Info 32. You can see system information. System information. Open this system information. Look at here. So my operating system is Windows 10 Home Edition, right? This is a full screen snip. OK, can you see this is a my operating system is Windows 10 Home Edition. And uh, can you see this is my processor? So i5 processor 3230M 2.6 gigahertz processor 2 core processor 4 logical process in it. See this is my processor information. It is my 64 bit PC, 64 bit PC. This is my operating system version. You know, one batch, this, they got this question. What is your operating system version? 
So 10.0.19044 like this. Okay. This is my installed memory. My RAM is 12 GB RAM. My RAM is 12 GB RAM. See it is. We got some information from here. And also you can scroll down. See it is my 12 GB RAM. My processor. My 12 GB RAM. Okay, and uh, uh, availability RAM. This is a uh, hypervisor related uh, enabled or not kind of stuff. Okay, next. Go to this hardware resources. No, no, no not hardware resources components. Go to components storage. Disk. There you can find uh, your hard disk size. See this 500 GB hard disk. And this is the partitions in it. In this hard disk, the partitions. Next one is this is another hard disk. Another hard disk. This is a one terabyte. One terabyte. So that is 500 G, um, GB. This is one terabyte. Two hard disk are there. So where we will get it that information? Components, storage, disk. Okay. In summary, you will get a what is your operating system? Operating system build version, 64 bit processor, and you are getting your your processor information, your total RAM capacity. Okay, and uh, of course this is a virtualization. Okay, the next one, guys, uh, DX Diag. DX Diag is not for system configuration. DX Diag. Sir, yeah, tell me, tell me. Sir, please tell me how to open MIS Info 32. MS Info 32. You can use Run. If you don't know how to open Run. See, look at uh, there is a Windows button and run. Uh, or Windows button and R. Parallel, you have to type press. Press Windows and press R. Then run will be open. You can type MS Info 32 or, or in case you, you, you are not getting that one, then go to this uh, search. Search type in search MS. Info 32 Aut automatically you are getting this on C system information automatically it will open system information or you can type system information. Okay, sir. You can type system information. Okay. So next one is a DX diagram. Same DX diag also you can open in a search or a, in a run command also you can open. So this is a DX diag like this. It is a, an a exactly say no, it is not to see what is your system configuration. It is not for checking system configuration. It is for. It is uh, mainly for. Your uh, DX means direct X related information means graphic card, graphic memory uh, related. It is also showing some information. Look at here. This is your operating system. Your operating system Windows 10. Home edition 64 bit and it's a build version. Okay, this is your sys processor i5 3230M. So 6 2.6 gigahertz, 4 core, 4 CPUs, 2.6 gigahertz, or something else. Okay. So processor model. This is your operating system. And uh, this is your RAM, 12 GB RAM. And this is your direct X version. This is a drivers for a graphics, right? To run any games and all, you know, it will ask for a, a what what is your direct X uh, minimum version 11, 12, 
like that. So this is a fall. So about your graphics, then you can go to display, render also you can go. So this is your uh, built in graphics. My uh, HD graphics 4000. OK, this is uh, approximately to um, 2 GB uh, graphic card it, uh, internal graphics. This is my graphic card information. So uh, NVIDIA GT 4720M, it is uh, 2 GB uh, graphic memory. Sir, this render is used for graphic is card, a, sir. What it is? जो ये रेंडर है सर ये ग्राफिक कार्ड को शो करने के लिए है सर यस यस सो द बोथ आर ग्राफिक्स ओनली डिस्प्ले इज अबाउट योर बिल्ट इन डिस्प्ले इन जनरली ओके एंड इट इज आल्सो शोस लाइक दिस इज माय ग्राफिक कार्ड ओके दिस इज अबाउट अ साउंड एंड आई थिंक इंफॉर्मेशन व्हिच इज दिस OK, so in general, last time I went to the uh, Bajaj Electronics uh, in Hyderabad. So uh, we, we should know that so what is the system configuration and uh, how much graphic memory. So what we do, so generally we go there and type um, DX Diag open and check the first system configuration. And next one is their graphic. Card. OK, guys. This is DX Diag, so it's a DirectX Diagnostics tool. DirectX Diagnostics tool. And uh, <coughs> next one is you can go to Windows Start Settings System about kind of stuff. So this is the Windows button. This is the settings. Go to settings. OK. This is my system. I'm going to first part that is called a system. Click system. Scroll down, go to about. So in this about, you can also get some information like this is my processor, i5 processor 3230M 2.6 gigahertz. I have a 12 GB RAM, 64 bit operating system and 64 bit processor. Compulsory both are 64, 64 on. OK, 64 bit processor, 64 bit operating system and my processor is uh, sorry. My operating system is Windows 10. Home Edition 21 H2. It's a, a recent model. It is installed on built in OS build future pack. Uh, it is showing. OK. So what we are, what are the information? Of course, our processor related information, processor, RAM, 64 bit processor, 64 bit operating system and your operating system details here. Uh, it is asking like a storage. So my C drive storage separately, D drive store separately. It will, we can get it, but that not a main point here. OK, so in a settings, always go to system, click on about. So there you will find those information. OK, the last one is command. Go to command prompt. If you don't know how to open this command prompt from run, you can also put it in search command CMD. I try to open system info.exe so it is try to collect the information from different resources see it is here it is see again what is your operating system okay uh, your 64 bit processor with single processor is installed okay your, your processor model is not completely shown here but important is like your uh, RAM capacity showing. OK. Uh, your IP address will be shown here also. Possible. I have a lot of adapters. 
Okay, mainly to check this configuration, we we can use this. There's a different ways uh, to check the system configuration uh, also as well. And also you can use certain applications like a spiky CPU Z kind of stuff. Spicy is a uh, easiest third party tool. Okay, means you will get a lot of information from spices compared to CPU Z. Uh, no, 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 not currently. I'm not doing anything. Just uh, it will collect all your information, guys. But it is also danger to use the third party. Why? Because of so you, you may have a some sensitive sense to information like a license kind of stuff. So it will give you little problem later. It's a summary operating system, Windows 10, Home Edition, right? I have a i5 i5 processor, okay, and a 12 GB dual core processor. It is sorry, dual channel processor. Sorry, 12 GB RAM, DDR3, and uh, this is a graphic related. This is storage related, and uh, I don't have optical drive, so I removed the optical drive. I insert the extra hard disk here. So only about operating system. Only about uh, CPU. OK, so number of cores, core zero, core one. What cache memory? RAM, how many RAMs? I have two RAMs are there. OK, right. So RAM, motherboard, graphics, storage, Optical drive, audio, peripherals, network connection. So you can go through each individual one and as well as you can go through some memory also. So we need a it is need operating system, Windows 10, 64 bit, and CPU, RAM, and disk, hard disk. Mainly hard disk free space is also important. This is the third party tool, so you can you easily download freely from internet and you can use it. That is I didn't mention here. Okay. So once you are gathered, either you use any technique, either you use a task manager or MS Info 32, or maybe uh, you are going to settings system kind of stuff, system and about, or you uh, use DX Diag. But once you gather the system configuration, put it in here. Guys, try. Just try in your systems or anyone's like you, you, you. If you don't have your own system, then try on your brother system. Or outside our internet scape also you can try to gather to gather the system configuration. So note down that system configuration is there. So what is your CPU? My CPU is i5 processor 3230M. My RAM is 12 GB. And uh, I'm using 64 bit processor and my operating system is also 64 bit means Windows 10 home edition 64 bit I'm using. So I have a 500 GB hard disk. I, I put a only one hard disk that is 500 GB hard disk. Okay, how much free space is available that is we can Actually, you have to put it. How much RAM is available? Kind of stuff. So this is the, about your system configuration, guys. Compulsory, you should know the system configuration. And then there is a very good questions. What is these questions are an important questions you, you guys asked about a cache memory. So what is the use of this cache memory? And how to increase the RAM capacity? Is it a better to increase the RAM or a year converting normal hard disk to SSD? OK, so that is a very important question, guys. So do not think so we are asking some people think they're asking a question means OK, it is a stupid question whether we should ask or not. There is no stupid questions, guys. There is Sir, no uh, stupid. All questions are Sir, important. Could you please? Could you please explain again what is DDR3, DDR4, or DDR5? Uh, RAM, 
from starting there is a ram models are there so there is a dram and sram so sram build based on a pure form of rams pure form of sorry pure form of transistors purely mosfets only they use so then this sram become cache memory to cpu it is very costly and um, that must not easy to handle so what they do so sram and dram so sram is pure form of transistors mosfets it is easily integrated it easily integrate with the cpu so then this C then this sram is become cache memory to cpu and this dram is a, a combination of this dram is a combination of your resistor transistors kind of stuff okay resistor transistors uh, capacitors it is little slower than a sram later lot of uh, synchronization a uh, synchronization technique they use they build a synchronous dynamic ram sd ram d ram means dynamic ram s ram means static ram sd ram means synchronous dynamic ram then the speed of ram is started increasing and no lagging in it and it is further developed into ddr model double data rate so double data rate sd ram the ram is actually developed from sd ram so that is a double data rate sd ram then ddr1 uh, this is ddr1 next is ddr2 ddr3 ddr4 like a ram model is changing the difference between ddr3 ddr4 uh, is the speed clock speed is different you know usually i ask people so what is the best way to learn something about uh, basic uh, hardware components and all so i given one idea so then in one batch starting batch okay so they they like they like it actually so what is that an idea to learn the something so lot of people think we should follow the uh, certain websites the website is uh, you know the technical blogger websites are there okay technical uh, blogs are there na right? so we have to follow that one so then we know the latest technology so as i know that is a, a not exactly like a, a market available technology okay so look at here it is best is always a e commerce websites like a amazon or a flipkart see this is the 8gb ram ddr4 8gb ram ddr4 2660 Two six 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 megahertz clock speed. Okay, two six 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 clock speed. Uh, see, here it is. You can see like that. So different RAMs having a different thing. So you can see this is um, RAM different RAM capacities. Okay. Mm. Yeah, here it is. This is also RAM, but I changed the RAM style is three two zero zero. So this is a three two zero zero model. This is still DDR four. Okay. So if I I want to go to DDR three. So DDR three is still there. uh it is there um yeah that is a desktop ram this is a laptop uh, this is a desktop ram so earlier i showed that is a laptop ram how many pins it is showing ddr3 how many pins it is showing 240 pins 1600 megahertz you can see it's very simple it is 240 pin desktop ram it is 240 pin 1600 megahertz 240 pin 
cities. It is also different model to GB RAM, DDR3, 1600 MHz. Then also you can go to details. It is 240 pins. Okay. Any DDR4 RAM, just again we have to go back to the DDR4 RAMs. This is a DDR4 RAM. So how much uh, speed it is? This is 4 GB RAM. So 26, 26, 66 means 266 megahertz speed. Possible any pin configuration? How many pins? 288. Very good. Very good. Very good, guys. So that meaning you are all listening and understanding. Understand the difference between one RAM to another RAM. This is the desktop RAM. This is also a desktop RAM. A big one. So you can see straight one is desktop RAM only. So the speed is different. Pin is different. So one RAM to another RAM, pin count is different and uh, a speed is also different. That's why if a motherboard is supporting, if a motherboard is support, uh, a motherboard is supporting DDR3 means you can insert a DDR3 only. If motherboard is supporting DDR4 into that particular model only, that is only support. Okay, so then that's the main difference. You can easily uh, understandable difference. Okay, guys. Okay, sir. So it's already 12:30. I have taken a lot of time for you. So what I will do? So take a break, guys. Take a 15 minutes break. So I will take another uh, 15 to half an hour. So not 15, minimum half an hour I have taken for checking how to check the IP address. That's it. That's a very simple topic actually. So we'll go through that, uh, how to check the IP address. Meanwhile, uh, what I will do, I will share this to your watch, uh, WhatsApp. Okay. So go have a tea or coffee or kind of stuff. And uh, where is yours? This is the today's PPT. It is uh, information is available here. So how to check the system configuration, what to check in the system configuration, how to check IP address is also there. So take a break, come back by 1245. 